Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I wasn't going to record a video today, but then I decided, well, the Shane Dawson series released another um, episode in their series, and I did the first two, so now I'm going to touch on the third and the fourth chapter of the Shane Dawson Jeffree Star Beautiful World Jeffree Star series. Some interesting insights that's happened, and it's coming through fruition so I figured it would be a good time to talk about it and some of my opinions and feelings about things uh, the first episode episode three we saw a couple controversies going on I don't know if you well one of them would be considered a controversy I guess uh, Shane Dawson's past got brought up again um, he had made some rude comments about doing dirty nasty things to a cat which was a joke and it, this has been a couple years ago that this has happened and it just got up, brought up randomly and people believe that and I'm I'll be honest with you there are people that do crazy strange weird stupid things but uh, during the time when Shane said something like that, he was in the midst of being still that person that made really crude, crass comments that weren't true, but just for shock value to try to get people to talk and to watch his videos. And, oh my God, what's Shane going to say next sort of thing. So that controversy kind of happened. And this is all in um, episode three, kind of brought up at the beginning earlier in the year. Uh... So that stuff was happening, but at the same time, Jeffrey's warehouse got broken into, which was a big ordeal, over a million dollars, maybe more. I don't remember the exact amount. It's been a couple weeks since I watched that episode, but um, a lot of product was stolen, things that weren't even announced yet. One of the Jeffree Star concealers were stolen, blue blood palettes were stolen, lots of things were stolen from the warehouse. So it's kind of interesting to see this behind the scenes because you didn't hear about the break-in. You heard about Shane's stuff that he was going through as far as the controversy with what he had said in the past but what you did know is at the same time it literally was happening the same time that the break-in happened and them researching that and what's going on with that uh i found that pretty interesting because how coincidental that something like that happens at the same time i guess it can happen but the fact that those two are you know filming all this stuff so you actually see the reactions that it gets and the planning and the timing and things like that. So they kind of alluded that it could be an inside job as far as uh, Jeffrey's incident of breaking into the warehouse, which it absolutely could have. I don't know that we ever heard 100% for sure if that's what it was or not, but they alluded that these two coincidences, coincidences happening at the same time could have been planned from a third party outside source. Uh, it's interesting to think about, do I think that's what happened? No, I just feel like that's a little, that's a little much of a reach. I just feel like on the um, precipice of this coming out and Shane getting a lot of traction from uh, his Logan Paul series uh, and then his, um, or Jake Paul, Jake Paul series, from that and then the you know just he keeps garnering views and so of course you're gonna have your detractors and people who are trying to bring you down and bring up stuff in the past so <clears throat> it's quite interesting that also had a uh, quite an interesting effect on Shane and how he wanted to approach people who brought up controversy with him so people are arguing you know he kind of said he's like well I'm just gonna be like well yeah that was in the past here's my palette etc. So a lot of people were saying that they felt like Shane's kind of changing and that's not really a way to address stuff. I really don't think Shane is that person. I know he was joking around about being cutthroat and not letting, you know, apologizing and apologizing, and apologizing. I don't think he's saying he wouldn't apologize for stuff that's happened in the past, but you have to ask yourself when you get to a point, when is enough enough? If you've apologized for something 
and then you've apologized again and you apologize again and you apologize for being an idiot years ago and people keep bringing up things that happened during that time when do you say i can't keep apologizing for my past if people want to keep bringing it up that's fine but you have to realize you know if it's something three years ago well you did this three years ago and look at you now trying to act all high and mighty yes because heaven forbid that anybody has an opportunity to grow as a human being i don't care it's, this isn't even talking just about shane anybody if we don't allow people to grow and change then we're no better than anybody else we all go through this we all grow up we all learn mistakes we all learn from things in the past and it goes back to what i was saying before about everything being broadcast on the internet so when you're younger and maybe going through things learning how learning who you are society changes a lot too we become a lot more pc about how we address stuff and people don't take lightly to some of the jokes now that were made even two three years ago let alone 10 years ago 15 years ago you can get away with a lot more back then and now everyone's on guard and can't do that everyone's gonna be mad there are certain things that should be addressed but you have to know where it's coming from when it's being said i don't know i i think that there gets a point where we have to let people grow i figure you can Call somebody out on something they apologize for it. Great. You should be able to accept that apology. I'm not saying not to hold people accountable. We absolutely should. But everybody should get a chance to correct themselves. And if you don't see them continuing in the behavior that they were in after they apologized, then we have to look at it as growth. Let it go. Move on. Focus on what's happening now. If they're repeating themselves, yes, by all means, keep calling them out. But... I don't know. I wouldn't want to keep apologizing for something that happened in the past. I would I would kind of be the same way. But I don't think that Shane would really ever be like, this is the way it's going to be and this is how I'm going to be. I don't think he's that type of person. I think that he has too much of a conscience to just kind of cut somebody off and be rude to them. He really appreciates everybody and this is just what i gather from him his personality even talking with jeffrey and things um he's so worried about hurting people's feelings and i don't know i just i really don't think he'll ever be that cutthroat and if he does one time or two times i think he'd wind up apologizing for it as coming across as kind of harsh just my opinion on that i have my little notes so i don't forget what to talk about so we found out in that episode he's also releasing two palettes he's releasing a bigger palette and a mini palette kind of like the uh jawbreaker palettes and mini breaker and then the jawbreaker palettes so are going to do two separate palettes we also got to see them picking out shades and looking at them and then them coming in and i think a lot of the shades are very very pretty and kind of the process on that them swatching them and then the ones they decide why they decide to send them back to get them reformulated to see if they can get them approved we see, uh, you know, some merch designs and stuff like that. So then after that episode aired, that was pretty much the basics of that. And then after that episode aired last week, his last week, a couple days ago, I don't even know when it was, but uh, his merch store opened with Killer Merch, which is Je part of Jeffrey's brand that he helps, uh, you know, get people's brand out that we saw in the previous video. Mm -hmm um kind of the merch and how much he can make with that so he released a whole line of a piggy backpacks to piggy sliders uh andrew also has a couple items on there as well there's sweatshirts just t-shirts lots and lots of things i personally got moved to overnight so i'm getting used to that transition so i'm sleeping during the day i didn't even know what's happening and i get up and of course everything's already gone and everyone's saying it was gone in like 10 minutes anyway but i actually like a lot of the stuff that i saw in there the designs are really interesting i think he has a brand that you know he could keep selling it's just a little disheartening a lot of these people they don't take into account how popular they are and they need to do a better job at 
getting stuff stocked and ready for those people. That's my only complaint about that because if anybody, if you're working a nine to five job, you're working overnight, you're sleeping during the day. I mean, everyone's like, oh, set an alarm. Well, if you're at work, how are you going to just break off right at that time? There are situations you're never going to be able to. So if you're one of these people that were super excited and want to get your hands on it, then you can't because you don't have that opportunity. You know, that that to me, that's always been my issue with some of these releases, not properly planning. I know sometimes you can't plan because you're not sure what the reaction is going to be on them. But, man, they knew this was coming. They knew. So now I don't think stuff's going to get restocked till December. So that's kind of a long ways to wait. And I'm sure once it gets restocked, it's going to be gone in 10 minutes. So if you can't hit that window, you're not going to get it. And I'm sure people are going to be selling them on eBay for lots of money. But I will have to say, I think it's great. There are a few things that I actually want. I like his conspiracy shirt. I think it's incredible. I can't wait to get that. And I like that he has big sizes too, because I'm a big boy and I need a big size. So... I'm looking forward to that. I think he has great, um, just great products. And I think it was really smart of him to go with Jeffrey on that. So I'm excited to kind of get into that. And now as of today, well, yesterday now, they released the next episode. So this episode basically focused on them getting back in the shades, a logo design for Shane Dawson, and we also saw kind of them saying goodbye to the house, him and Ryland saying goodbye to their old house because they moved into a newer house. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Morphe negotiations. We, we still know the two palettes, but we also know for sure there are six lip colors coming as well. Uh, we also find out that the collaboration launches November 1st. And there it's roughly... It sounds like close to a million units altogether of everything that they'll be getting and stocking to make sure they have plenty. Do I think they'll still sell out? It's good. If you think about it, a million sounds like a lot, right? But you have, they're exclusively going to be at Morphe as far as retail locations. So they'll be at Morphe and it alluded to 500,000. Now that's for two two of the palettes the the mini and the main one and then it's not including the lipsticks the lipsticks i don't even remember what they said on that but and then you have the jeffree star but i believe they're still going to be able to you'll be able to get them on like beautylish and things like that now my concern starting this episode was i got up from sleeping and of course had been out for like four hours and I saw some tweet. I try not to read anything because I was like, I need to watch this first thing so I don't get any, like, tea spilled before I actually get to watch the video. But they talked about people are upset about the Morphe thing. Well, I was like, oh my god, please tell me <laughs> this is not a, uh, that they were making it with Morphe. I have nothing against Morphe, but it's just so much when most influencers are with Morphe, it gets to be a little like, okay, it's start, starting to feel like a little bit of a monopoly to me. So I don't know. I like people going with other brands, but at the same time, then you have ColourPop and you have ABH who are collabing with people, but they release stuff every single week. So then that collab kind of gets pushed to the back because they're already on to the next thing. It's kind of Makeup industry right now is really strange. It's just really hard to keep up with everything. And even if you are releasing something, I mean, you have about a week before something else releases. But we find out that, you know, it is still Jeffree Star Cosmetics and Shane Dawson. And it's just selling at Morphe locations. But like I said, I do believe it's going to be at his regular online retailers, I believe you, Beauty Bay and um, Beautylish should be selling them as well. I'm not 100% on that one. They didn't say that in the episode. I just saw it online. So that's kind of good to know because I always buy from Beautylish because I feel like not as many people go to that direct store. So, and they ship really, really quick and they have excellent packaging and all that stuff. So that's probably where I'll try to go buy this. 
the logo creation is interesting to see the very beginning it started with logo creation it's kind of sprinkled out and of course at the end you see the logo uh he got his first um file back with several different types of logos to see what kind of he liked and ryland really liked a specific one and shane you could just kind of tell he wasn't really feeling it but they wound up going with in-house i believe and they came up with a logo and i think it's actually a pretty nice logo i do like the original logo that they went with because it was a triangle with some squiggles and then it looked like an eyeball but i think the thing with that is they said they thought it looked like a football i kind of like the aesthetic of that logo but i do like the new one it's just a triangle with the sd in it so i found that to be very interesting uh, the saying goodbye of the house, uh, it was it was interesting to see that too because him and Rylan, you know, they've spent years there. And I think always going back to your old haunts is something that's very, uh, I don't know, kind of just, you know, you think about all the thoughts and things that's happened at that place. And I, they filmed so much stuff there and it shot, it showed a couple clips of them you know, from old stuff that they had filmed there or whatever. And it's interesting to see how other people interpret a living space once you move. I found that pretty interesting. It wasn't a big part of the episode, but I'm kind of glad that they touched base on that and, and saying goodbye to the residents, so to speak. So that was kind of a sweet moment. Uh, the morphine negotiations went pretty well. I mean, you kind of got an idea of money-wise how much people are spending to get into this and... Um, they're saying, you know, $20 million is, you know, Shane could walk away with $10 million, things like that. I, of course, at this point, it's just negotiations and what they're saying. And of course, Morphe has, you know, other collaborations. And they mentioned if there was anything coming out and he didn't want to release these items in October because he felt like it was more gimmicky because that's when people talk about conspiracies and things like that. So he wanted to go for November 1st. And then he did ask if there's anything else coming out. He kind of wanted to be the sole focus, which is what I was saying before. They release stuff so quickly that your time in the spotlight is shorter. So if they're going all in and spending all this money, they want to make sure they get a good return on investment. So you got to have that promotion and you got to have, you know, just a lot of emphasis on a product to make sure that people are aware of it. And, you know, you don't want to wake up one day and then you get an email from, I don't know, maybe you missed an email for a day or you're working or whatever. And then you say, oh, I didn't know this person released stuff because these people had sent three other emails saying they're on to this and you can get this and you can get this. Well, I didn't know that other person released something and you may have missed out on it. I don't know that this is, I don't know if they said this is limited edition or not. I hope it's not. And then you finally, finally see kind of the layout of the colors. They'd asked a couple people and you kind of see where he was going in his head. The last thing that you see of those, I think the colors were really pretty. I like the layout. I think he was very smart and Shane was very concerned about having something that isn't just, you know, a lot of colors just because he wants it to be a lot of colors. He actually wants it to be, if people are spending a lot of money, he wants it to be something that people are going to continue to use and not just be a one-time thing. Because a lot of these palettes are kind of gimmicky in that way. Because you see a lot of color palettes, you see a lot of this stuff, but walk down the street or walk, you know, anywhere. Look at what people are wearing. Most people do not wear crazy colors I say most people. There are a lot that wear colors. But these big like drag queen eyes and artsy eyes and things like that, those are all, you know, photo specific. It's it is very artsy. It's very creative, but average everyday wearer does not wear that stuff. People do wear colors, but they generally blend it in with other things. So I think Shane was very, very smart at that. He's got a very good head on his shoulders. I mean, there's a reason why let's say urban decay urban decay used to be known for these outrageous palettes and the colors and things like that they've kind of went to the naked palettes which are more monochromatic but they're very user friendly they're very everyday wear people complain about them but there's a reason they keep making them is because people buy them because it's more of an everyday wear 
And I've, I've said that a lot. People had said, you know, I don't get featured on brands and I don't get this. Well, if you're doing these crazy elaborate eyes, those are nice. It's nice to look at. But for average everyday people, they want to see how products perform and how you can use them on an everyday basis. You know what I mean? Like they, they want to know that those products can be used in their everyday and not they want to be able to do crazy looks maybe once in a while but average person is just gonna be like i need some browns i need maybe a black i need more nudes maybe some shimmer i need some reds i need some corals whatever works with their skin tone maybe a pop of green and that's why you see a lot of pop of blues i'm tired of looking at pop of blues there are other colors i mean i think you can put specific colors in there but you get my gist. It's just average everyday user uses more basic colors. So Shane's very smart about coming up with this stuff like that. I think these palettes will probably be something more user friendly than we've seen even from Jeffrey. Like Jeffrey's Blue Blood, great palette, but it's a lot of blues. And it's very specific. You know, you kind of want to reach into that when you're filling that specific Blue Blood fantasy, if you know what I mean. So... Uh, Morphe negotiations, we talked about that, the palette, six lip, liquid lips and a lip gloss. I'm excited about the lip gloss. The six lip colors look very, very good. Of course, they're Jeffree Star's formulas. I am super excited about those. I think that's going to be a great addition to his line. Um, and the only other thing I really want to talk on, I feel like seeing how giddy like Jeffree gets and seeing how giddy like Shane is getting. And I don't necessarily think, yes, the money is an aspect of it, but if you take the money out of it, you're seeing people do what they love and having that excitement because you are creating something and you are so excited about how things are turning out. You have, you know, you're looking at your logo and you're looking at your details and you're looking at specific colors and you're talking to people and you're so invested in it that to me really struck with me you know who doesn't want a job where you just fully and truly enjoy the process and love what you're doing and seeing Jeffrey get all giddy and looking into the glass and you know <laughs> just I don't know I I felt that I've I've felt that before myself and it makes me think about my job and how I feel about my job and I don't get feeling like that from my job you know so I don't know I just you you can just feel the excitement the tension of not knowing but just going through this experience I really like watching this and I kind of wish we had some tea but I'm not disappointed it's not there, if that makes sense. I'm so fascinated by this and just seeing them react and the things that they're talking about is truly an interesting journey and I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Anyway, I've talked enough. That was episode three and four of The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star. Have you guys watched it? What did you think about it? What are your opinions about some of this stuff? I'd be interested to know. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Orbiting Live. Leave me a comment down below. I like this video. Subscribe to my channel. You know, you can talk to me below. Talk to me on Twitter. I love talking with you guys. Twitter especially. Follow me on Twitter. I'd love to hear uh, your side of the story on stuff and what you think about all that went down and I'm curious to see what everyone thinks about the Morphe stuff so now I can actually go online and look at stuff without being bombarded by um, people telling me what's happened before I even watch it. Hope you guys have a great evening night and I will see you in the next video. Bye.